Imagine if each one of us had to eat our chewing gum and throw it on the side and say, no, don't worry, we are creating employment. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. But we are doing this in our own homes. Some people think I'm married so that my wife can pick up everything. So we just throw it, leave it. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is our role model, and he should be, and he has to be, and we have to follow him. He used to do a lot of the housework himself. Many times he used to milk the goat on his own and bring forth the food on his own. Try it out. Sometime, perhaps you can cook. I don't know if they will eat what you've cooked because of how it comes out. But you will learn inshallah, slowly but surely. And we are not saying it's necessary. It's not a must. But the minimum, you don't need to cook and so on. But what you should do, and here I'm addressing the men folk, what you should do is be an asset to your home. Be someone who can sit and talk properly. Because if you don't talk to your family members, who do you want to talk to them? You want the neighbor to come and talk to them. Who else do you want? A friend to come and sit and spend hours on end. Then you are not fulfilling your rights. And the, the house, the heart of the community is each household. You need to know that. So in the same way, the heart of the body is what we know it is. And it is, it causes or it, if it is good, the rest of the body is good. And if it is not, the rest of the body is not. The same way, the family unit is the heart of the community. And because the community is very big, we will have several points. And all these points come together. Each one fulfills its own role. If we cannot fulfill that role in, the, in our home, how do we expect a good community? If you look at the disasters today, the amount of divorce, the amount of problem, the amount of hatred, the amount of jealousy within the, the extended home, it is primarily because the hearts are not clean. And thereafter, we have not fulfilled our own role. You know, the mother is a very, very important figure in the home. Without her, there's no home. The same way the father. We cannot say that we can do away with any one of them. We cannot. And for this reason, the orphan who has been brought up without a father or without parents, the status of that orphan has been elevated so high in order that the rest of the community can try to fulfill the role of those whom the child is missing. That is the reason. Otherwise, what was the point of raising the status of an orphan? There was no point. We could say, oh, their parents died, never mind, they'll carry on. No. Allah says, even to put your hand on the head of an orphan with some feeling of love is an act of charity. And to look after the orphan may earn you paradise, not just any ordinary paradise, but in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know the hadith. Ana wa kafilul yatimi kahatayni fil jannah. Myself and the one who looks after the orphans will be like this in paradise together. He joined the two fingers. So we have a family unit. We need to work on it. And we need to make sure we are an asset. Let's change our tongues. If they were evil, make them good. Let's broaden our chest, expand our heart. Let's become people who are an asset. Do you see what is going on today? Let's be honest. People are not fulfilling their roles. So wife complains of husband, husband complains of wife. How and why should that happen? Children complain of parents, parents complain of children. This is happening. Husband goes out to work, he's busy with someone else. Wife goes out to work, she's busy with someone else. We are just living together coincidentally. That's what happens. So when you come back home, we are fighting with each other. Why? Your mind and heart is somewhere else. It's not in the house. So one might ask, what are the benefits of Tawbah? Do you know that the benefits of Tawbah, one of them is that you will be granted sustenance. The wealth that we want so much. If we engage in istighfar and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give it to us or He will give us barakah in the wealth. Listen to what Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam told his people in another place in the Quran. This is in Surah Nuh. This is in Surah Nuh. 
ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم أنهارا Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam told his people engage in istighfar, engage in tawbah and you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving. He will send the rain as a result of your repentance. So when we want rain, we need to ask Allah's forgiveness. Then the rain will come. And over and above that, he will grant you lots of wealth and he will grant you offspring who will be the coolness of your eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And then he says on top of that, he will grant us Jannah in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us as well. Don't relate this good news to your brothers because they might plan and plot against you. They might become jealous of you. What do we learn from this? Those were the children of a Nabi. And something good, he told his son, don't tell the others. When something good happens to us, we don't even have to tell our family members sometime until we've achieved something. Sometimes we're planning to go somewhere. Who says that you have to inform everyone? No, it depends on how important that journey is. You don't have to always inform everyone of your next move. You don't have to tell them about your business deals. You don't have to tell them about anything. You should seek assistance in fulfilling your needs by being secretive to a certain extent. You don't have to tell everyone everything because shaitan is bad. They might be good. Shaitan is an outright clear enemy against man. So even if a person does not want to be jealous, you find that sometimes shaitan puts in a spear, an arrow, in interferes and makes a person jealous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us jealous. When a person has a child, for example, a little baby, for those who are newly married who have children, alhamdulillah, if the baby sleeps all night, you don't have to tell the whole world, you know what, that baby, mashallah, sleeps all night. From that night on, the baby might not sleep because Ain and the evil eye might attack that baby. You can say, look, that's a normal child. You know, they sleep. You know how children sleep. So you haven't lied. Alhamdulillah. At the same time, when, it, when something good happens, you don't have to tell everyone. And if you tell them, make sure they say, mashallah, in front of you, don't be shy to say, say, mashallah. He was thrown into this pit and they picked him up. When they picked him up, what does Allah say? They regarded him as merchandise. And they said, no, this will make money out of this. You know, sometimes when we pick up lost property, what do we do? Very valuable. You pick up a blank check. It tells you a million rands. What do you do? Very tempting. May Allah grant us Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who can hand it back. You know what happens? Sometimes like what we read in the newspapers, in countries like these, you find you hand back a large amount of money to the cop shop, to the policeman. Sometimes it disappears from there. But don't worry, so long as you didn't steal it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So the same applies here. These people, what do we learn from them? They looked at an innocent boy, a very handsome man. They said, no, we'll make money out of this. Come, bring him into this. They sold him at the next market. Someone bought him, a very wealthy man bought him. And in a nutshell, what had happened? The wife of this minister of Egypt had an evil intention when she saw this handsome man, handsome Yusuf, alayhi salatu wasalam. She says, you know what? He's a worker for us. He works for us. Let me advance sexually. How many of us are guilty of making sexual advances at the workplace? Let's be honest. This lesson comes from Surah Yusuf. Whether it is male or female is besides the point. The lesson is don't ever make sexual advances that are haram, especially at the workplace. If someone is working for you and don't think that this person here is actually under me. So let me try my luck. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us. Look at the example. Who would have guessed that we learned this from it that whenever our eyes and our gaze is not controlled and we happen to look at the opposite sex more than what we are allowed. In that case, it will result in destruction of one way or another. Let me give you an example. Sometimes you're driving your motor vehicle and someone happens to pass quite good looking and you turn, you might bump the car in front of you. It can happen. Why? It's similar to cutting the hand. It will cause bodily harm, material harm. It will cause lots of harm. It's a fact. Sometimes if you engage in an act, you might end up with a huge disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So this is a lesson to say anyone who wants to follow that path, there is destruction coming your way. Do you know that we are taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you have wealth, a salary at the end of the month or wealth, and there is no barakah in it, no barakah at all. Ask yourself, you probably engaged in a sin. 
You're probably oiling some of your bad habits. Maybe casino, maybe gambling, maybe drinking, maybe nightclubs, maybe drugs, maybe a woman, maybe someone of the opposite sex. You need to pay money. You need to look after someone more than what Allah has shouldered upon you. How can there be barakah in your wealth? So if you find your money is running away quickly, leave the sins and you will find that 500 rands will last the whole month. You'll still have 450 inshallah. May Allah grant us barakah in Imagine, our wealth. The hadith says, Allah will grant the shade of his arsh on the day of Qiyamah to a man whom when a lady who is very good looking and wealthy and well to do who has a high status in society calls him towards sin and she says look he says look I fear Allah Allah says on the day of Qiyamah I will call him out by name everyone will be wondering what is this man called out for by name Allahu Akbar Allah says come come this day of heat you will be under the air conditioning system, Allahu Akbar, under the shade of my own arsh. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant it. This is the interpretation of the dream that I had in the very beginning of the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars. So the sun was depicting the father of the house, the moon was depicting the mother of the house, and we've got to listen to this carefully. And the stars were depicting the 11 children. If you take a look at the qualities of the sun, strong powerful it shines everyone feels secure in the presence of the sun we go out we work we earn sustenance we come back we feel so secure that is those are the qualities of the sun every father in every home needs to have the qualities that the sun outside has he needs to present give the warmth in the house the sense of security bring in the sustenance make everyone feel secure and make them feel well don't we feel so good when the sun is out we run around Without any fear, Alhamdulillah. Those are the qualities that Allah has kept in the sun. They are supposed to be in every successful father of every home. The moon, beautiful, you can look at it. MashaAllah, you can admire it. The moon, the light of the moon is solely derived from the sun. Do we know that? The, sh the brighter the sun, the more you see of the moon. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept the example of the moon, the example of the successful mother in the house. The stars who are the children, you don't see them during the daylight. If you look at the sun, you won't be able to see it directly. You will probably need some glasses. That is the respect of the father in the house. Not to say we shouldn't look at him, but we respect him. But when the moon is out, the stars are twinkling, mashallah. It shows the closeness of relation between the children and the mother. Alhamdulillah. Let's try and understand this example. It's a very deep example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, successful mothers, amazingly, they should be having the qualities of the moon. Can I give you one more jewel that we extract? The moon goes through a 28 day cycle precisely. Some days it's not there. Some days it's there. The same applies to a woman. She goes through a 28 day cycle. Some days she is there. Some days she is not there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true understanding. Wallahi, when Allah gives an example, it is a perfect example that fits. And if we think that it is not a perfect example, we need to revisit our intellect because the creator cannot make a mistake. The stars, Alhamdulillah, we've seen. Now let me tell you, and we want to end with this. Inshallah, I might mention one verse of Surah Al-Ra'd, seeing that I've taken a little bit more time because it's an interesting surah today. Very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us yet another example. When we mix the roles, when father wants to play role of mother and mother wants to play role of father, what happens? There is chaos and confusion. They are fighting. The children lose the most. Don't we agree? The children suffer the most because these two have now confused their roles. So when the sun goes into the place of the moon, the moon goes into the place of the sun. We have an eclipse where you can see neither of them. Amazing. And what happens? The stars are nowhere to be seen when there is an eclipse. The same way when we mix up our roles that Allah has given us, we have what is known as a social eclipse, chaos in the house. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that sign of Qiyamah. In the same way that an eclipse is a sign of Qiyamah, we are supposed to be engaging in salah and istighfar and tawbah. When the eclipse is there outside, when there is a social eclipse in the house, that is also a sign of Qiyamah. We need to be engaging in istighfar and tawbah and salah until the condition returns to normal. That is Surah Yusuf.